OpenCV is an open source computer vision library with hundreds of functions for processing and understanding images. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with OpenCV in Python by using it to find an image inside another image. This simple form of object detection will be a good starting point before we move on to more advanced image recognition techniques. Hey, I'm Ben, and this is Learn Code by Gaming, where we study programming concepts by applying them to video games. The quickest way to get started with OpenCV is by pip installing the pre-built binaries. To do that, you simply pip install OpenCV-Python. Once installed, you can use the library by importing CV2. And throughout my videos, you'll see me importing CV2 as CV, which is somewhat common, um, but you're free to import it either way. So it's up to you whether you want to reference OpenCV as CV or CV2. And when you install OpenCV, NumPy will also be installed. And NumPy is used extensively when working with OpenCV data. So the top of your files will normally look like import CV2 as CV and import NumPy as NP. And that's all there is for setup. So now let's grab an image we want to process. I'm going to be using this screenshot from Albion Online, which is a free-to-play MMO. And I actually just grabbed this image from the Steam page for the game. But if you're following along, feel free to use a screenshot from whatever game you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to crop out a small section from our screenshot, and we're going to save that as a separate image file. And then we're going to use OpenCV to find the position of that smaller image inside the entire screenshot. And this is the image that I cropped out earlier from my screenshot uh, just using Photoshop. I just picked one of the cabbages. So if you follow my channel, you're probably already familiar with PyAutoGUI. And if you don't know what PyAutoGUI is, it's just a Python library for automating keyboard and mouse inputs. And it also has some basic computer vision features, like allowing you to take a screenshot, doing simple pixel color matching. And it also has this locate on screen function, which does essentially exactly what I'm going to teach you in this video, how to do with OpenCV. Locate on screen just takes a smaller cropped image, and it returns the position of that image if it finds it somewhere on your screen. I bring this up because if you look at the PyAutoGUI documentation, you'll see that to use this confidence parameter, you actually need to have OpenCV installed in order for that to work. And the confidence parameter is really useful. It allows you to do fuzzy matching, so you can still find an image on the screen, even if it's not a pixel-perfect match. So if PyAutoGUI is using OpenCV under the hood, you can reason that using OpenCV directly is going to be a lot more flexible and a lot more powerful. So if you're following along from my previous tutorials, the architecture you should have in mind is this. Continue to use PyAutoGUI or PyDirect input to automate your inputs, but now we can use OpenCV to get much better vision into what's going on on the screen. The OpenCV function that we'll be focusing on is called Match Template. And the OpenCV documentation is a little confusing, so let me show you how to navigate it. Starting from docs.opencv.org, go over to the Doxygen HTML section, and then click on the link for your version of OpenCV. I have 4.2.0 installed. And here you'll see the different modules that OpenCV is organized into. And because of the way that we installed OpenCV, we only have access to these main modules right now. Uh, but that's plenty to get us started. And we're going to be diving into the image processing module and then go down to object detection. And in here, you'll find just one function. It's the match template function that we're looking for. And as a Python programmer, this documentation should look a little weird to you. That's because OpenCV is written in C++, and most of this is C++ documentation. Sometimes they'll give us a quick note down here about the Python method signature. But it makes sense that an image processing library like OpenCV would be written in C++, because C++ is so much faster at those sorts of algorithms. And because of the Python wrapper, we get the best of both worlds. We get the speed of C++ and the joy of working with Python. So looking at the match template documentation, we can see that we're going to give it an image to search over, and then an image to search for, and then we're going to give it some method for doing the comparison. And we'll end up with some sort of result array. And there's a little more info on what that result array will look like down here in the parameters section. And if you scroll up, you'll see this scary looking math stuff. And these are just all the different comparison method types you have to choose from. Maybe you can visualize these like Neo from the Matrix, but I can't. So let me show you another part of the documentation that will show you what these look like. If you go back to the main page of the documentation, I'll open it in a new tab, and then go to OpenCV Python tutorials, and then to image processing in OpenCV, and finally down to template matching. And here you'll find a nice quick tutorial for how to use match template. So in the example code, they're searching for instances of this cropped image of a soccer player. 
And in the results, they show you the output for all the different comparison methods. So in the images on the left, the bright white pixels, those are the positions that matched most closely with the smaller cropped image that they were searching for. Until you scroll down to the last two methods, these square diff methods, they're inverted, so the black pixels are the closest matches. And it's good to note that these closest matches, the white pixels, corresponds with the top left corner of the image that you're searching for. So when we write our code, you should experiment with all of these different methods uh, to find out what works best for your use case. And you can refer back to these examples to give you some idea about what the differences are between the different methods. All right, so let's write some code. The first thing we want to do is load in the image files in a format that OpenCV understands. So to do that, we're going to use the imread functions. So I'm going to call my first one the haystack image. And that's the screenshot that I'll be searching through. And CV, I'm read. And the first parameter is the file path of the image that we're loading. So in my case, because the image is in my Python root, I can just use the file name. It's Albion farm. And the second parameter is a flag that allows us to do some pre-processing when we load in our image. Uh, I'm just going to load in my image unchanged though. So that'll be cv dot read unchanged. And then similar code for the next image. I'll call this the needle image. So we'll be searching for the needle inside of our haystack. And this file is called Albion cabbage. And I'll also read it in unchanged. Let's take a quick peek at the different read options that we have. We can read it in unchanged, but we could also immediately convert it to grayscale. We could also immediately convert it to a BGR color format, which is the format that OpenCV prefers. You can also reduce the size of the image right when you're loading it in. So now that we have our image files loaded, we can go ahead and call match template. And for the comparison method, I chose this CCOEFF normed. And I just find that this one gives me the best results most of the time. And now that we've called match template, let's go ahead and take a peek at the results. So to do that, I'm going to use IM show, which is just going to show an image in a window for us. The first parameter is just the name of that window. And then the second parameter is the image or the data that you want to display. And if you were to run this code, you'd see that it runs and it closes immediately. We don't get a chance to look at the image. So to get our script to pause and to give us a chance to review the image, we can call cv.waitkey. And waitkey will just pause our script at this position until we press any key on the keyboard. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. All right, so this is the result of match template. And remember the white pixels will be the best match locations, whereas the black pixels will be the worst locations. And we can see that it is about what we expect. The brightest match is right here at the location of the cabbage that I cut out. But then also some of these other cabbages around it are also pretty good matches. Because remember, we're starting with this screenshot and we're looking for this cabbage inside of it. So now that we know that match template is working how we expect, uh, what we want to do is we want to get the pixel position of this brightest white pixel. And that will be the position for where our needle image appears in our haystack image. So to do that, first I'm just going to get rid of this debug code. And then we're going to want to use a function called minmax location. And minmax location looks like this. You simply call cv.minmaxloc and you give it the result from match template. And it's going to return four values. It's going to give you the minimum value, that is the blackest pixel. It's also going to give you the maximum value, that is the whitest pixel. How white is it? And these minimax values will be on a scale from 0 to 1, where 1 is the brightest white and 0 is the darkest black. And then it'll give you the location for that minimum value, and it'll also give you the location for the maximum value. So this will get the best match position. And for the comparison method that we used, we're interested in the maximum value location. So let's go ahead and just print out that location and the value uh, to see what we got. All right, so I put in some print statements here, and this max location will just be an XY tuple. So let's run this and see what we get. So looking at our output here, the best match location was here. And the confidence of that is 0.98, which is not quite a perfect match, but it is really, really close. I'm not sure why it's not considered a perfect match since I did literally cut this out of that original image, but it must have to do with how the algorithm works for the comparison method that we chose. And the way that template matching works is it's always going to give you back some sort of result. 
So even if we were to take an image that doesn't appear anywhere in our screenshot, and we run it through this algorithm, min-max location is still going to return a max location and a max value. It's just that that max value will be much lower than 0.98. It'll be something like 0.4. To indicate that that is the best match location, but it's actually not that close of a match. So to verify that you did actually find the image that you were looking for, you'll want some code like this. You'll want to set some sort of threshold where any value that you find above that threshold, it'll be considered a match. But if it's below that threshold, here I'm using 0.8, we'll just consider that as the needle wasn't found in that screenshot. So in our case, 0.98 is greater than 0.8, so it's going to tell us needle found. And again, this max value is just a measure of the confidence that it did find a matching location. So now that we have the location of the needle image inside of the haystack image, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take that original screenshot and just draw a rectangle around where we think that image is. So to do that, OpenCV has this rectangle function. And to use this function, you simply give it an image to draw on. And I'm going to give it the haystack image, which is our original screenshot. And then you need to give it the coordinates for the top left corner of the rectangle and also the coordinates for the bottom right corner of the rectangle. And the fourth parameter is the line color for the rectangle. And this is in BGR format. And all these values go from 0 to 255. So here we got the blue and the red at 0 and the green at 255. So we expect this to be a green line. And then you set the thickness of the rectangle border in pixels. And then you set the line type for the rectangle. And here, line 4 is going to be the outline of a rectangle that we're looking for. And now that we've drawn on our screenshot, we can simply use imshow again to output that image and see what we got. But before we can run it, we of course need to define top left and bottom right. So top left, we already have, that's just going to be the max location. And for bottom right, we can calculate bottom right just using the top left location and then adding on the width and the height of the needle image. And when you're using OpenCV, you can grab the width and the height of an image just by using the shape property. So we'll grab those right there. And now we can calculate the bottom right corner of our rectangle just by taking the x coordinate of the top left and adding on the width of the image, and then the y coordinate of the top left and adding on the height of the image. And when I run this, you can see that we now have our original screenshot, except we've drawn that green rectangle around the image that we cropped out. So we've successfully found our needle image at this location. And that was off screen for you a little bit. So remember when we're reading in our image files, we can downscale them right there. So I'll cut them in half so you can see a little bit better. So here we have the half size images and it's still finding that cabbage successfully. Another thing you can do, I'll back out of that, have my images be unchanged again. You can also save this image to a file instead of trying to show it using imshow. So I'll comment that out. And that function is just imwrite. So the first parameter is the file name of the image that you want to save. And the second parameter is just the image data. And it will smartly format your image in the appropriate format for the file extension that you give it. So now when I run that, I now have a result image in my folder. You can see it's that same image as before with our handy green rectangle. From here, there's tons of directions you could go with OpenCV. I want to keep exploring it, and I want to keep making videos about what I find along the way. So if there's something specific you want to see, let me know in the comments. I'd like to keep these videos as short as possible because OpenCV is such a massive library. To make it approachable, I think I really need to break things down into small chunks. So that's my plan. Subscribe if you want to see those videos, and I'll see you next time.